Amazing Spider-Man 2 is in theaters today, and our own David Plummer had the chance to sit down with the cast, including the evil villains of the film, Jamie Foxx and Dane DeHaan. Welcome, Davey. Hey, hey, good morning. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, that's right. I got a chance to go to New York to talk to the whole cast. Jamie Foxx, one of the most talented guys in showbiz. Dane DeHaan, one of the up-and-comers. So I got that, a chance to sit down and talk to them. Take a look. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the movie was fantastic, first and foremost. Uh, Jamie, first for you, you know, you've had such a varied career, done so many different things. Uh, now you're a villain in a huge superhero movie. Did you have any reservations about that going in? No, you know, it's it's, it's weird. I, I don't know what the reservations would be, but when you look at like all of the people that are playing superheroes, from Robert Downey Jr. to Hugh Jackman to Dane DeHaan, Andrew Garfield, Emma, the one thing that's that. It's true about all of these people. They're great actors and actresses. And I think that's why the, the franchise has flourished, because they do have great actors and actresses that can be compelling before they uh, put the suit on. So I want to be a part of that for that reason, if that's, you know. But the other thing is, is that people have seen me for years. Uh, but a nine-year-old kid, this is going to be the first time they've seen me hmm. in something. And so that's going to grow a totally different audience. I'll be able to touch a totally different uh, uh, fan base and, and excite them. And I wanted to go back to some things that I haven't done in a while, like the in living color type things. I mean, black man with a comb over and, you know, the nerd and the sort of like crazy, goofy characters and then into Electro. So, for me, it's like, a, um, any chance you, any time you get a chance to hit the restart button or the reboot, you know, in this in, in this day and age, it's always great. Okay. Uh, and Dane, how much did uh, Chronicle sort of prepare you? I loved Chronicle, by the way. Oh, thanks. Really, that was such a surprise movie for me. Just yeah. loved it. And thanks. you were so good in it, but how much did that character sort of prepare you to play Harry Osborn? Um, I mean, look, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if it ultimately uh, played a part in getting me the role. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that there's many similarities between Andrew Detmer and Harry Osborn. You know, Andrew is, um, I mean, to simplify it, Andrew is a completely powerless person that comes into all the power in the world. And his he has a rage against a world that has always been cruel to him um, and has superpowers. Harry Osborn was born with all of the privilege, all of the power, and all of the money in the world. He uses his money to buy his happiness. He's absolutely powerful. And in this movie, you start to see his power being taken away from him. Um, and he doesn't have superpowers, but he has the resources to have a really cool suit and basically be the Tony Stark of bad guys. Um, so, And his anger, his villainous anger, is very pointedly at one specific specific person. It's at Spider-Man. And that's who he wants to get. Andrew Detmer wants to kill the world. So to me, although they're both ultimately villains and both of these movies are origin stories of villains, I think their stories are very different and they're very ex almost exact opposite people. Okay. Uh, did you take anybody, you know, obviously where you are in Hollywood, uh, you've certainly run into people like Max to a certain, to yeah, a certain I extent. Yeah, I grew up with a guy like Max uh, who's about eight years old than me, who uh, would wear the military green jacket, walk to himself, you know, <laughs> live with his mom, and we would always wonder, like, what's going on with him? You know, really quiet, very, very smart, like on genius level. And so I drew from that, you know. Um, you know, there were scenes that were cut out of the movie that, you know, that, that is time constraint. But there was a scene where he's <clears throat> talking to his mom, trying to get his mom to remember that it, today is his birthday and she doesn't remember it. Hmm. And he's like, Mom, it's a very important day today. You know, uh, uh, you know, have anything you want to say to me? She goes, you're a dummy, like I say every day. <laughs> yeah, Mom, but, you know, uh, tw uh, 42 years ago, Presbyterian Hospital, room 24B, 7 pounds, 3 ounces. Is this a riddle? And she doesn't remember his birthday. So I use sort of that to build him up so that you have, you know, you empathize, sympathize for him so that when he does turn into Electro, it's just not some guy being evil. He actually, you know, he actually comes from a, a, a space. 
All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys are ever in Chicago, we'd love to see you. Our host, Val Warner, is your biggest fan. Oh, Jamie, man, hey, dude. She was supposed to be here today, and Val. she couldn't be, and she misses you. She wants to meet you. Hey, mm. She is your biggest fan. All right, fam. I'm very pretty. Very pretty. Fam. All right. Thank you guys so much. Mm, thank, thank you very much. Good night. Yeah. Jeff already knows about Jamie. Yeah, that's your <laughs> pass. That's, that's your right. pass. All right. Well, Richard's going to tell us whether to spend or save on the movie. And hey, in the last segment, you just saw Olympia and Jason Brown do the splits. Come on over here, Jason. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but our very own David Plummer can do the splits. As I'm, well. I'm ready to see it. Hit it. Well, well, there you go. Let's do it. Right. If you want to see it. All right. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? Go. All right. Already taking my shoes off. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you.